wanted to do a story about home birth because my friend Catherine is about to have her first child and her and her husband Todd decided to have their child at home. I am the exact same age as Catherine and I'm kind of thinking well pretty soon I'm gonna be having kids too and is this something that I would want to do as well. We decided to give birth in our own house which means we're going to have a midwife come and she has two assistants. They're apprentice midwives. They're going to be here as well. It'll happen in the bedroom so we should start there. <laughs> Theoretically. This is the birth, birth pool. tub. And it actually has a plastic liner that goes down inside of it that has heating pads that go on the outside room. They call it the midwife's epidural. Because when you get it, just really relieves contractions. But you can, if everything's going well, you can just have the baby in the water and then bring it out and hold it. And and she's a certified. I mean, this isn't just she's like a, some. She's a certified professional midwife. So it means like there's a certain number of hours that you have to have like attended births, classes you have to take, and certification to keep up. You have to know certain medical procedures. If anything is wrong with the baby after it's born, we can go to the hospital. <laughs> going to talk to Becca. She's a nurse in New York City. There's tons of statistics on both sides saying that it's super, super safe or that it's completely, completely deadly. I mean, it just depends on who you ask. It's true it's not for everyone, but there's lots of people in the population for whom that isn't a perfectly safe, viable choice. As long as it's attended by a, prof a licensed professional or two, preferably, and as long as there's transport to a hospital nearby, or reasonably nearby. My name's Amy Fairman, and I'm a student midwife, and I'm training to become a certified professional midwife. For healthy, low-risk women, that they're um, actually more safe at home because they're more likely to have a physiologic birth. I mean, hospitals are for sick people, and by and large, pregnant women are not sick people. I mean, they're, they're having babies. Like, it's not necessarily a medical condition. The C-section rate in this country right now is like 32%. Um, and the World Health Organization says that it should be like 5 to 10. It's really obscene right now. There's no excuse for us to have such a high cesarean rate. They'll say that you're not progressing fast enough, so they want to, like, induce labor. If you're being induced, your baby's not ready to be born. Lots of interventions necessitate, necessitate other interventions. You know, there's going to be all of these balls that have started rolling and everybody's going to be pretty invested in the idea that you're going to have your baby in the next 24 hours or so. So when it doesn't work, there's always a cesarean. If I could give one piece of advice to anyone having a baby in a hospital, it'd be to wait as long as you can before you go. Because you get put on that, you get put on that clock. It's a very, very, very small percentage of transports from home that are an actual emergency situation, like an umbilical cord prolapse. That would be a reason to go right away as quickly as possible to the hospital and for the mom to have a cesarean. We are about to go talk to Rupert and Kate, who live in Canada. They just had a home birth. When it happened, I was just amazed at how silent it was it all was. You're so used to those kind of TV images of a baby coming out and screaming its head off and right. getting whisked away from the mother and it was so different to that. It was, you know, it was just like this baby came out and she hardly cried. She just gradually learnt to breathe. I mean, emotionally it's quite a, an amazing thing to be here in this room here and know that this little baby was born there, you know. Yeah. And you get to sleep in your own bed afterwards. Oh yeah, 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 you take it, the whole thing, you just, yeah. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> My 
my labor was 13 hours, and I think it could have gone on a lot longer if I had been in a hospital and if I hadn't been comfortable. I would say the contractions earlier in the day were, they would just sort of come and go, and I would moan through them, and that felt really good. And I would, like, I really wanted to be on all fours and sort of, like, rocking back and forth. They were totally on top of everything, always checking his heart rate. Yeah, I mean, I could do whatever I wanted, and they were just there to make sure everything was going okay. When I felt like I couldn't do it anymore, they were just like, yes, you can. Yes, like, you can. Every time I was going through a contraction and pushing, they were like, good, really good, really good. And they they let me see what was happening. They had a flashlight and a mirror underwater so I could see what was happening. I could see that I was, that I was making progress. But it was really cool. He was born underwater. He came out, and they put him on my chest, and... We let the cord stop pulsing, and then we cut it, and then I got out, and they had to fix me up a little bit. They know what they're doing. They were just excellent. It's not easier to have a home birth. It's still painful. It's still hard. You're still working. But you're just in this really supportive environment that you've created. It's more manageable. Nobody's pressuring you. Nobody's bullying you. You get to make decisions about how your baby's born, how you labor, Mm -hmm. what they do to your baby afterwards. Mm -hmm. And he's so awesome. He's so, like, (laughs) pretty and he has all his fingers and toes. We believe that life grows spontaneously on the earth. So it must be possible for life to appear on other suitable planets, of which there seem to be a large number in the galaxy. But we don't know how life first appears.